There will be a lot of news, a lot of rumors around the silver and black because, well, there always seems to be a lot of drama around this team. And I don't want you to miss any of it. Free agency, draft, the latest around Derek Carr. Hit that subscribe button right now and make sure you turn on those notifications. That way you never miss any videos. We're dropping here on the Raiders Report. Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Report. Mitchell Renz from Chat Sports. And coming up here, we're going to get into the latest rumors, especially around D.C. and some draft news that have been popping up here a little bit. Before we get into all of that, today's show is presented by our awesome sponsor, Manscaped. If you haven't already checked out all of their amazing male grooming products, I encourage you to go to manscaped.com, use code Raiders to save 20% off, and get free shipping on all the Manscaped products. So what are we going to be talking about here today? Derek Carr trade is it happening this morning ESPN insider Adam Schefter he gave us some new information and uh pretty big info interest in Anthony Richardson Dave Ziegler is quote intrigued by him Raiders mock draft from Daniel Jeremiah I'll tell you who he picked and what I think about the move and then yeah David Carr's been trolling the Raiders but in the troll he did actually put out some interesting information. So, yes, we will talk about all of that coming up right now here on the show. Let's first, though, talk about Carr and a trade. Schefter this morning said it's more likely a trade happens than him being released. Remember, this move has to be made before February 15th because that's the day that Derek Carr's $40.4 million guarantee becomes guaranteed. So if the Raiders don't want to spend that, they got to make move on from him. So either you trade him before that or option B, you can release him. Now, if the Raiders do, let's say, make the move and they move away from Derek in a trade, sure, you're going to eat $5.63 million in a trade, but you save $110.68 million over the next three years. Here is the exact quote that Schefter said this morning. The demand for quarterbacks has always has always outweighed the supply. The entire NFC South, Commanders, Jets, Texans, Colts, Raiders, and more are expected to be players in the quarterback market, which will be the reason sooner rather than later the Raiders will trade Derek Carr. People can laugh at me all they want in terms of, hey, Mitch, you don't know what you're talking about. When Schefter says something like this, you need to be able to listen to it. When a guy like Rappaport says, yeah, it's probably more than likely Derek's going to get traded. Those are some of the bells and whistles. they got to start be going off a little bit. I do expect Carr to waive his no-trade clause, and I have continued to say that because D.C. will make more money if he is traded. There is not going to be an NFL team out there that gives Carr $40 million a year on the free agency market. However, if he does get dealt, this is what the new team would have to take on for his salary in terms of cap space. But remember, when the Raiders gave Carr his new contract, they gave him $65 million guaranteed. The remaining guaranteed left is $40.4. So whatever team makes the trade for Carr, they are giving him $40.4 million guaranteed. But in terms of the salary cap space and how it impacts the team, this is how it would be. Derek knows he's not going to get this type of money signing as a free agent. That's why he will be more than willing to waive his no trade clause. So I want to know from the nation out there if anybody decides to click on this video, maybe you're interested in having Derek as your quarterback. Do you think the Raiders will trade Derek? If yes, I want to know what you think that he's going to get in return. I will continue to say, yes, I believe the Raiders make a move. I believe Derek Carr doesn't try to do any shady shit because that's not really the type of person he is. And he knows he will make more money. If you can get a first-round pick, you do it in a heartbeat. I don't see that happening. I will continue to say that I believe the Raiders get a second and a fourth rounder. But I will be jumping for joy if a first-round pick is involved in a trade for D.C. Coming up next here on the Raiders Report, is the Silver and Black actually considering drafting quarterback Anthony Richardson out of Florida? I know a lot of people get nervous because the last quarterback that Josh McDaniels drafted in round one was also from Florida, and his name's Tim Tebow. So that didn't go well. Before I tell you about this story, though, we do love Manscaped around here, and I'm always telling you, hey, make sure your balls are taken care of. Manscaped.com, 20% off and free shipping. But guess what? Manscaped, we got some breaking wee -oo, news wee -oo, here. Wee -oo, wee -oo, wee -oo. Yeah, big time breaking news. Let me tell you about it right now. Here on the Raiders Report, attention all bearded gentlemen. Manscaped has launched a beard grooming kit. 
Are you tired of using multiple products to maintain your beard? Look no further than the Luxury Bearded Hedger Pro Kit from Manscaped. This complete beard maintenance kit has everything you need from the modern man on the go. From trimming to treatment, this kit has it all. The kit includes the beard hedger, AC adapter, and USB-C cable, beard shampoo, beard conditioner, beard oil, beard balm, and a travel bag. Plus, as a special bonus, you will also receive a free beard accessory pack with a bearded brush, bearded comb, and beard scissors. The beard hedger was designed with a unique cutting angle to have its built-in comb lift flat lying hairs for smooth, single stroke trimming, and for a limited time, you can get 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com with promo code Raiders. Don't wait. Get your Beard Hedger Pro Kit today and take your beard game to the next level. I know a lot of people have been asking me, Mitch, how do you keep your beard maintained? I'm excited because I'm going to elevate my beard game, and I can't wait to show you all how awesome this product is. So the links, as always, comments, description, use code Raiders. I hopefully you all can remember that. Shout out to Manscaped for not only making our balls look great, but now our faces look great as well. Let's talk about Anthony Richardson here. The report is that Raiders general manager Dave Ziegler is, in quotes, intrigued by Richardson. Las Vegas has the number seven overall pick, and obviously the Raiders, as we discussed, are likely and more than likely moving on from Derek Carr. Here's my two cents on this. Every single NFL GM should be intrigued by Richardson. Why? Because the dude is just an absolute freak of nature. When you talk about athletic players at the quarterback position, and I don't like throwing this out there because Cam Newton was a much better thrower of the football his final year at Auburn, but his ability to run, it does. It reminds me of somebody like a Cam Newton, and when you look at the measurables, they're very similar. I will also say this. I sat up really, really late on Thursday night, and I watched way too much film on Anthony Richardson, so much that Alex looked over to me, and she's like, are you watching what I think you're watching? And I was like, if you think I'm watching Anthony Richardson, then the answer to that is yes. I saw this. Good vision. His mechanics, though, they are some of the worst mechanics that I have seen from a quarterback coming out of college with this much draft type. I'll be real with you. But if you do take a player like Richardson, let him learn behind a vet for one year. If you think that he's going to be able to play right away, you're going to be very, very wrong on that. And I believe then you're just going to throw him away, which I do not want. The upside is absolutely positively there for him. Now let's look at what NFL Draft Buzz had to say on Richardson. Anthony Richardson has the highest upside of any quarterback in this year's class. His measurables are off the scale. He has elite speed, height, and an outstanding arm strength. From a physical comparison, he reminds us of Cam Newton with the speed of Lamar Jackson. Now, obviously, very, very big names there because both of those quarterbacks won NFL MVPs, and Richardson at 6'4", 230 pounds, he can move. The numbers, though, they scare me because when you look at a quarterback thrown at 53.8%, that's just downright bad. Like, it's, it's bad. There's no other way to look at it, right? The SEC, sure, there's a lot of talent. But if Richardson can take that next step, Holy shit, y'all. He's going to be a special quarterback in the NFL. This is what I had to say on January 20th after I started watching a lot more film on him. Anthony Richardson may have the highest upside to any quarterback in the 2023 NFL draft. He is an athletic freak. Richardson sees the field well, but his mechanics are bad. Give him a year to sit and learn behind a vet. I wouldn't draft him at number seven, but at the end of round one, beginning of round two, sign me up 100%. Though, the more and more people I talk to that are in the draft community... Some people don't think he's going to get outside of the top 20. Now, I will say this. When we talk about quarterbacks, a lot of people, Raider fans, have been throwing out the name Jamarcus Russell. They've also thrown out the name to me, Malik Willis. I'm going to tell you all right now, if you see anybody comparing Anthony Richardson to Jamarcus Russell, just call him lazy because that's what it is. It's a lazy comparison because these players are not even close to being the same. Richardson is way more mobile than Jamarcus ever was. Jamarcus had a stronger arm. I will give him that. Not even close to the same prospect. So if you hear it, you see it, shut it down. It's just downright dumb. Here's my question to you, though. Would you be okay with drafting Anthony Richardson in round two? And I might even say this. Would you be okay... If the Raiders figure out a way to trade back up into round one to get him, let's say he starts sliding down that 25, 26 range and the Raiders really like him. 
Would you be okay with the Raiders trading up to get him or just taking him in round two? For me, the answer is yes, absolutely. If he found a way to get into round two and the Raiders are on the clock at 38, I would have no problem with them trying to trade up and get this young man here. He's got to learn behind a veteran. I don't want to throw him out there to the Sharks, but if you can have somebody work with him for a whole year, work on the mechanics, work on learning the system, and then... All he has to do is go out there and ball. There are some players that you just can't stop him. And if he figured out the mechanic side and he was able to maintain and run an offense with the amount of talent that the Raiders have, Richardson has that upside. And if you're McDaniels and Ziegler, shit, what do you got to lose? You got to try something, right? Or else it's going to be a long, long, and not even long, it's going to be a short career for you here with the silver and black. Let's go continue to talk about Daniel Jeremiah and the latest mock draft that he released. I love looking at mock drafts. I love being able to see what people who I respect in the industry think could land with this Raiders team. Now, I'll show you his top 10 picks here after I talk about who he ended up going with, but at pick number seven in Daniel Jeremiah's latest mock, he goes with offensive lineman out of Northwestern, Peter Skaronsky. And if you've watched my shows before, you'll know that I freaking love this kid. There's no doubt. The Raiders need some help on the offensive line, especially if your plan is to bring in a 45 potentially 46-year-old Tom Brady, you need help on the O-line. I believe Skaronsky is more of a left tackle slash could even potentially play left guard because there are a lot of scouts out there that are worried about his measurables. But this is what Jeremiah had to say on the Raiders taking Skaronsky at 7. Skaronsky is the best offensive lineman in this draft class, and that's an area the Raiders must address. He doesn't have ideal length, but I don't see that as an issue after studying his tape. I 100% agree with this, right? I mean, I put out a video, it's about a week ago at this point, and I said he could be an elite tackle and he could be an elite guard. His athleticism for his size, it's incredible. An elite processor. I want my offensive lineman to be able to process things quickly. That's what you need. Does he have short arms for an NFL tackle? Yes, I will straight up tell you right now. But NFL scouts said the exact same thing about his old former teammate, Rashawn Slater. If you draft Skaronsky, there is a po probability, possibility, especially if you take him at seven, that they would kick him to potentially left tackle and you could kick Colt Miller to right tackle. I'd be okay with it because, let's face it, you need to upgrade the offensive line, and I would be stoked if the Raiders could get a prospect that I have in my top five. So what about this? Get your red pens out right now. Let's say you're sitting here, Jeremy Juggs and I were live for the NFL draft. Roger Goodell, boo the man, walks up into the stage and says, with the number seven overall pick in the 2023 NFL draft, the Las Vegas Ra Raiders select offensive tackle Peter Skaronsky. How would you grade it? A, B, C, D, or F? I would give it an A grade because it's a really good player that I really don't see busting no matter where he goes. Now, if you want to talk about my big board here, sorry, Jeremy here is busting Manscaped and he's losing his shit behind the screen. I did release, though, my top 10 prospects that I would love for the silver and black to potentially get at number seven if you want to check it out. Another reason to hit that subscribe button and check out all the videos we're dropping here on the Raiders Report. Now, when you look at mocks, I like to look at, all right, what exactly happened before we got there? So in Jeremiah's mock, he had the Bears selecting Jalen Carter at number one overall. Texans, Bryce Young. Cardinals went Will Anderson, and this is where it gets a little bit funky. Colts go Will Levis. Seahawks take Tyree Wilson. Lions, they're going to go Devin Witherspoon, cornerback out of Illinois, who I like, but this was a little bit high for me. Raiders take Skaronsky. Falcons go Lucas Van Ness. And then number nine. Carolina Panthers take C.J. Stroud, which is where this is where the conversation is going to go. I like the idea of getting Skaronsky, but I, I got to tell you right now, if C.J. Stroud is on the board at number seven, I hope the Raiders trade back. Yeah, there's a lot of hype around Stroud being taken. If the Raiders don't have a quarterback, like you don't have Tom Brady and Stroud's on the board at seven, I could absolutely see them taking that but in the world of what everybody's reporting it seems like Brady's going to come to the silver and black I would hope then that the Raiders are like you know what we could get a lot extra draft capital and then we could trade back and that's what I hope would happen if you got Brady at QB or a veteran that you trust I get CJ Stroud's a good prospect but I'd be more than happy if the Raiders would end up trading back. Now, if you're watching this today, which is on Saturday, Jeremy Juggs and I, we're going to be live for Chiefs and Jags watch party. We're going to get it started maybe somewhere, I don't know, 45 minutes, 30 minutes before kickoff, depending on how it goes. But let me know who you guys got, and hopefully you cheer on Duvall. I know Jeremy and I, we're going to be wearing wigs, Jags masks again. It's going to be weird, but 
as always, we're going to have a good time. The final story here on today's show is around David Carr. And David, he was trolling a little bit. There's no doubt about it. And he did, though, hint some news. He could say what he wants. He called people clowns, and I'm pretty sure it's directed at me, but he's blocked me, so is what it is. But David said in a Raiders video, or not a Raiders video, on a video run by, I believe it's like his nephew or something like that, just kind of talking about Derek, and he wants to be able to tell his story. He took a shot at Brady. I don't care what anybody says. He took a shot at Brady. But this is what he did say. David said, Brady will almost assuredly play quarterback for the Raiders. I don't really think Carr has many sources outside of his brother Derek, but this is just another example of, hey, another guy saying that the Raiders are more than likely going to get Brady, and I understand that David wants to stick up for his younger brother. I don't, I'm not going to really rip that apart, but I also think that this, I consider Raider Nation my family. When he's saying the shit that he is, I am. I'm going to get upset about it. And then when you just continue to look at this whole thing of David doing it, like if Derek looked upset, it'd be different. It really just seems like David is more upset than Derek. And I'm sorry, David Carr right now is coming off like an absolute diva. In fact, I'm going to start referring to him as Diva Car. That's what everyone should call him. Because why is he talking about this so much? If I'm David Carr and he's continuing to thrash the Raiders, there are three things right here. Either Derek isn't telling him to stop, which I think is lame on Derek's part. Number two, Derek is encouraging David to rip apart the Raiders, which I think is lame. Or David is ignoring Derek Carr, which may be the lamest of them all. There's no matter how you look at this, what Derek and or what David is doing right now, it's laughable. It's embarrassing. And I am honestly asking David Carr right now to stop trolling the Raiders because you're only hurting Derek. Raider fans, believe it or not, yeah, never won. I will always go to bat for Derek Carr. He was a player that I liked. He was a player I respected. He helped out the Raiders. He helped out this channel grow. But the more and more that this clown continues to talk... It's making me like him less and less and less. So I'm taking it right now. Stop talking about it. Move on. But if you do continue to talk about it, my job will also be continue to talk about it. So on behalf of me and Raider Nation, stop talking about your brother. It's only hurting his legacy with the silver and black.